Our Jonathan Sashadati is with us from London. Jonathan, May didn't leave this entirely open. She set a deadline for the end of tomorrow for Russia to explain. Unlikely that Russia will cooperate with that deadline. What are her options after that? Well, she said it was highly likely that Russia's behind this, and she outlined two scenarios uh, which she said they could choose from. One was that it was a Russian state action, and the other one was that the Russian state hadn't protected its nerve agents so that rogue Russian actors could have done this. Either way, she felt they had something to answer for. And she said, should there be no credible response, we will conclude that this action amounts to an unlawful use of force by Russian state against the United Kingdom. So very strong words there, effectively saying that she's going to announce on Wednesday what sanctions and what reactions she's going to put in place. Uh, and Jonathan, do we have more information? We've learned more about this nerve agent. Uh, any more information or speculation on how it was introduced to this former Russian spy and his daughter? At the moment, we don't have more information officially. We know that from Mrs. May's statement in the House of Commons just recently, uh, she said it was a military-grade nerve agent, which was part of a group of nerve agents known as Novichok. And she said that's how Britain knew that Russia was involved, because this was a nerve agent created by highly specialized Russian engineers. Uh, that means that she gave those two possible eventualities of uh, how it got into the country and was used, but exactly how it was administered, we're not yet sure. There are some working theories doing the rounds. Originally, it was thought that it was administered in the restaurant. Then the focus of the investigation moved to Skripal's house. And now it has moved back to the restaurant with some public health advice being given uh, to anybody who was in the restaurant or the pub where the two victims were during the afternoon to wash their clothes and wash any belongings like mobile phones in case they could be infected. And that means that it may have been sprayed on their bodies or it may have been administered as some sort of aerosol spray rather than what had been the assumption over the last few days, which was it could have been ingested in his house. Jonathan, given the very prominent Russian role on the world stage and not so much in a positive light, obviously this is going to be really a case where the world watches and Europe watches how the United Kingdom reacts. How much backing do you think Theresa May has in British government to really generate a strong response to the Kremlin? Well, the British government seems very much behind this, and the British people also are quite angry to read about this. Remember, it's not the first time it's happened. That case of Alexander Litvinenko, which she mentioned, is on everybody's minds. He was poisoned in the UK over 10 years ago uh, with radioactive material. Britain said then that this shouldn't happen again, and it has happened again. So Litvinenko's widow has been doing the rounds of the media here, explaining that she was given reassurances by the then Home Secretary, none other than Theresa May, that this would not be allowed to happen again. And because it has happened again, she and others are saying that Britain didn't put in place tough enough sanctions or provisions to stop this sort of thing from happening again. That's why the Foreign Secretary summoned the Russian ambassador uh, to the Foreign Office today to ask which of the two possibilities May outlined was the case and to get a Russian explanation for how this nerve agent could have been deployed in Salisbury. Uh, they have got until tomorrow night to answer this, and that is when Theresa May will outline what the UK is planning to do in reaction. And i just curious, Jonathan, the condition of that Russian spy and his daughter and this policeman that was also apparently infected with this nerve agent. Well, the policeman did recover consciousness and was able to talk again. He was said to be sitting up in bed and able to communicate, which I think has helped somewhat with the investigations, uh, we assume. But he's also said not to be back to normal. And, of course, Scribble and his daughter, Yulia, are still in a coma. There's been no update about how they are. Um, they are said to be in a critical state. It's not known whether they'll survive this. Uh, in the meantime, of course, the health service will be working as hard as they can uh, alongside those who've been investigating the nerve agent to identify it, to try to help them recover their health as well. All right, Jonathan Sashadati in London, thanks for being with us. We'll certainly watch tomorrow as that deadline comes and goes right. that Theresa May set for the Kremlin and what she does afterwards, assuming that Russia's not going to suddenly have a change of heart and say, yes, it was us.